still ahead. This man will try to catch a flaming bowling ball stuffed with steak knives using only his head. I'm sure it could, you know, cut your face in half. Plus, they risk getting their fingers snapped off feeding these fish by hand. Now they'll try and feed these savages right out of their mouths. And the book collection, containing an entire wardrobe of sexy fashions. Next on Ripley's. It's a national pastime. Rolling a ball down a wooden alley aimed at 10 waiting pins. But imagine catching that 25 pound bowling ball with your face. Believe it or not, that's exactly what Mark Fahey is going to do. Anything round is very difficult to balance. I actually kick it from my foot to my face. You can suffer a minor concussion and uh, you know, no one wants that. Mark warms up with a little spoon work. He quickly moves to the bottle. Now he's ready to tackle a regulation bowling ball. Incredibly, this performance starts with his foot. And it doesn't stop there. Mark takes it to a new level by jamming some very sharp knives into the finger holes of the bowling ball. And does it again. But this time, he's not as lucky. Oh, oh, that one got me a little bit. And just when you thought it couldn't get any more dangerous, it does. Mark has to move outside for this demonstration. He's actually lighting the ball on fire. Mark has successfully done it and plans to push his dangerous obsession with balance into even weirder territory. There is one that I've been working on for a while, and that's the two-headed ax. It's so dangerous. I'll get it eventually, I think in another year or so. And that's an act that would definitely be a cut above the rest. You can usually find the hottest fashions on the covers of the hottest magazines. But Ripley's found a designer that's proving you can't always judge a book by its cover. Sleek, chic, and sexy. Designer dresses that are on the cutting edge of fashion. But you won't find these outfits on any Paris runway. Believe it or not, you'll find them between the covers of a book. These one-of-a-kind creations are the work of renowned Japanese designer Hirokai Oya. Inspired by the ancient Asian art of origami, he's hidden an entire paper-like wardrobe between the bindings of his books. Five years from now, I think everybody wearing books. Why not? Oya's 21 handcrafted volumes unfold into a variety of outfits, from a pair of jeans, to skirts, to dresses. You open the book, take out the fabric, unfold it, and put it on. But these books aren't cheap. It's a holy set. That's price is uh, 7,000 US dollar. It's pretty expensive, right? But it's so much work in there. The high prices mean Oya's clothes are usually only for rich customers, but many of the books have been purchased by design schools for use as teaching aids. Fashion instructor Casey Hale. I had to have these. I had to bring these here to show our students what creativity can be. But putting on these funky fashions in private is one thing. So Ripley's took Oya's designs out on the town to see how ordinary people would react to these extraordinary dresses. You can wear it anywhere. You can wear it in the street. The Farm. The outfits do turn heads on the streets of L.A. And for Hirokai Oya, that's a book with a happy ending. They smile, they laugh, they make me feel good.
It seems they can make clothes out of almost anything. For example, this wedding dress is made almost entirely of recycled toilet paper. We'll be right back. Next, would you risk getting your lips chewed off by these gnarly fish? The couple flirting with disaster when Ripley's returns. You've heard the expression, they lie like a rug, right? Well, how would you like to be sure that that special someone in your life is telling the truth? Just carry this in your pocket. It's a portable lie detector, and it works by measuring the stress in someone's voice. Turn it on. You see this little apple? The more it detects stress, the more the apple gets eaten away. I am seven foot, nine inches tall. <laughs> Eight out of 10 times, this magic apple is right. Now, watch this. Spencer and Annette Slate are avid scuba divers, and their favorite dives take place in these dangerous waters, literally teeming with moray eels and barracuda. Incredibly, the two have taken the art of diving and turned it into a contact sport. They regularly risk losing fingers to feed these predators by hand. But today, they'll do something so dangerous they rarely attempt it. Believe it or not, they'll try to feed them from their mouths. I've gotten hit in the face by an impact hit, by the barracuda hitting my mouth so hard, it actually worked one time, which hurt a lot. Spencer came up with his unique style of extreme scuba diving when he was just a kid. I've become to be known as the Barracuda Man, and over the years, people, of course, come to see me do it personally. They want me to do it. Eventually, Annette began joining Spencer on his high-risk dives. Well, the reason I started feeding the barracudas is because I used to be deathly afraid of barracudas. And watching him feed allowed me to have respect for barracudas instead of being afraid of them. So my mother tells me I'm crazy. And while they enjoy the rush of getting so close to the barracuda, these two know that they're taking a huge risk. They're the fastest and the most efficient predator in the sea. Uh, forget sharks. Sharks are, are, are big biters, lots of pressure, but they don't have the speed and the tearing ability that the barracuda does. If the barracuda wanted to bite you, you would not have a chance. Not only are they fast, these vicious fish are known to attack without warning, using their razor-sharp, serrated teeth as a deadly weapon. Last September, I was feeding uh, my, my pet out here, and he came in at an angle behind me. I didn't get turned in time for him. He was closer to me than I usually like him, and he swam and hit my face mask with his teeth. So I was very lucky that day. And it's not just the barracuda they have to worry about. These moray eels can be just as dangerous. You're always going to run the risk of getting bitten anytime. In fact, if you're catching lobsters, you run the risk of getting bitten by moray eel. Today, Spencer and Annette are diving in a protected area about five miles off the coast. These fish are not used to human contact and are obviously curious. Spencer and Annette are on the alert. The barracuda are close. Meanwhile, a curious moray eel approaches, and Annette attempts to hold and feed it. Sensing the food, the barracuda move in. And though it could easily land him in the hospital, Spencer does the unthinkable. Unbelievably, he risks putting the bait fish right in his mouth. The silent killer slices through the water with frightening speed and snatches the fish right out of Spencer's mouth. In slow motion, you can see just how close the barracuda's teeth come to Spencer's face. And though the predator could easily cut through the skin, severing tendons and veins, it's an experience these two can't get anywhere else. I always say this when we're going out on the boat. Things out here in the ocean have teeth. You just have to respect them. 